Hello, everybody. So first thing to know about the work breakdown structure in Dynamics 365 is that in the project management and accounting module, it is represented through the activity field on a project transaction in the system. So within that project transaction, there's the activity dropdown list, and that is the window into the work breakdown structure. And what we have in the system are a number of different parameters that will allow us to require the activity on certain transactions in the system. That basically means we're going to require that somebody put this project transaction against the WBS. So a number of advantages in that is that you're going to get all of the project transactions recorded against your WBS so that you can do both budgets and actuals against each task in the work breakdown structure. So the system is configurable to require the activity on transactions when you're using them. So out here in the project management accounting module for journals, we have some radio buttons here that will turn on the ability to require those transactions. We have the same thing from a forecast perspective, requiring the activity on the forecast transactions in the system. Both are found in the project management and accounting parameters. Also, from a general overview perspective, you have the ability to do some work breakdown structure templates in the system. So you can create and store templates in the system that you can then import into your work breakdown structures as you get going. And I'll show you a little bit about how that works. Like I said, when you're working inside of a work breakdown structure, you have the ability to export one that you've created and then import one from a template that is pre-existing. So this helps facilitate the creation and the management of your work breakdown structures. So I'm going to just go over the settings that we looked at here. So in my environment, I do have the settings turned on, so I will require the activity on my transactions. And from a template perspective, I'll go out there and show you where these templates are. So these are all predefined templates. I can create one here, or I can go create one as part of a project and then export it as a template. So what I will do real quick is just show you how that functionality works. I'll create myself a quick project here and then All right, so I'll create my project. The work breakdown structure is stored out here under the plan tab. Under the activities area, you'll see the work breakdown structure button. And that brings us directly out to the work breakdown structure form. And then you'll see the import export buttons here. So what I'm gonna do is import something from one of the templates that's already existing out there. So it'll show you any of the active templates. And if you just select the template and click okay, you will be able to import that work breakdown structure into the system. And it'll have all the subtasks that were basically built into the template already available for you. You can also store the effort in hours against those templates as well. So if the business is conducive to having projects with similar work breakdown structures, templates are the way to go to get those stored in the system and imported into your projects. So what you can also do with a template is import more than one. So if your business is structured in such a way that you can pick and choose from work breakdown structures and say, hey, I need to do a little bit of this and a little bit of that. I can select the second template and it'll basically append it underneath the task that I've got selected in the system. So templates are very functional with regards to being able to just quickly get a work breakdown structure up and running in the system. So secondarily, within the work breakdown structure, you've got some pretty straightforward, obvious tools with regards to maintaining that work breakdown structure. So creating new tasks, deleting them, indenting, outdenting, moving up and down. So that's pretty standard with regards to how the work breakdown structure could work. What I will do is just get rid of my guys here. And I will start a new one. So I'll use the new button to put together some tasks here for a work breakdown structure. Let's say I'm putting together a webinar. And so I'll create my tasks. Uh, 
I will have a dry run of that webinar, and then I will conduct the webinar. And then with regards to the indenting and outdenting of tasks, so let's say all my demo prep tasks, all the creation tasks are demo prep tasks, you need to move anything up and down. So very straightforward means to manage your tasks out here. Let's move these guys back in. All right. And again, if I wanted to export this as a template, I could just use that export button. Give it a name. And I can save it and it'll be in that list of work breakdown structure templates that I can then choose from for the next time. So within that work breakdown structure, I've created the tasks within the work breakdown structure. And there's certain settings that you can set that allow you to interact with these tasks in a couple of different ways. First, every leaf level task will have a project category associated to it. So that's a fundamental of the project management accounting module. Every transaction must have a project category. So what the system allows you to do is specify a default project category associated to each task. What they also allow you to do is lock that project category from being changed by the user. So if you have a strict setup with regards to project categories, and this task really should go to no other category than the one that you specified, you can lock that project category so that the users can't change that and change, let's say, pricing, for instance. You can have pricing set up with regards to project categories, and locking that category will lock that pricing into place, I mean, the cost or sales price into place. When you're recording project transactions, you have the activity field on the project transaction, which when you hit that drop down, is going to be the list of tasks in your work breakdown structure. There are two views for that list. One is the list view, which is just a straight list of the tasks in the work breakdown structure. The second is the tree view, which gives you the hierarchical representation of the work breakdown structure. So you can choose which one makes the most sense to you when you're looking at the tasks and recording the transactions. Sometimes the tree view, a couple extra clicks to drill down, does give you some perspective as to what is happening on the project. With regards to the recording of these project transactions, there's some feedback that you can get within the system to let the user know the rules that you're trying to set. So if you turned on the parameters to require the activity number on project transactions and somebody attempts to record a transaction without putting in that activity number, they're going to receive a message that says, hey, the activity number is required for hours transactions in the system. And another nice feature here is that you can disable the ability to record project transactions on parent activities. So you saw I had a little bit of a hierarchy I have a parent task and then three child tasks underneath it. I don't want anyone to record any transactions at the parent task. I want that to be a roll-up. I want all transactions to go to child tasks. And this checkbox comes in handy, blocking the parent activity selection. So it disables the ability for anyone to record a transaction at that level. So, so I'll go through a couple of these items here. When I am on a task, I'll click the details button. That's how I'll get to the screen here, let me edit my work breakdown structure first. And then I'll be able to change that category. So I'm gonna say this first one, I'll just turn it to QA and I will require it. And then one thing to know is that in order for any changes that you make to work breakdown structure, you'll have to publish them. So what this functionality allows you to do is when I edit the work breakdown structure, it basically puts it into a draft mode for me. And I can do all the work that I need to do in draft without it affecting the work breakdown structure that people are currently looking at right now. Only when I hit publish do the changes that I make in this form take effect. So that it allows you to maintain a draft. You can show differences if you're adding tasks to the work breakdown structure, show the difference between what was currently published and what's in your draft. So some visibility into changes that are occurring. But once you're ready, you hit the publish button and then everyone else in the system can now see that work breakdown structure. So what I will do is turn my project in process and just show you a couple of the items that we just talked about here. So I'm gonna record some hours transactions on this project. 
So first thing, if I just try to save this transaction, I don't have the activity number filled in. First thing it's going to give me is that message to say, hey, the activity number is required. We have to fill that in. So secondarily, now when you click that, I've got that tree view set up here so I can try to select one of these. Now, if I select that demo prep, which is my parent activity, it's going to give me a message to say, hey, no, I've got that parameter turned on as well. Parent activity selection is not allowed. So it'll stop me from recording to that particular task. So I'll choose that first task, create the PowerPoint. You'll see that it defaulted to the QA category instead of the PM category. If I try to change it, I'll get yet another message to say, hey, you can't change that category because it's set as mandatory. So all that validation, all the settings and the checkboxes that we've checked all will affect the data entry no matter how you do it, whether I'm doing an hours journal, it's coming through a timesheet, expense report, purchase order. The same validation exists in all the data entry areas for project transactions. At this point in time, once I know everything is good, it'll save that transaction for me. I just want to head back out to my work breakdown structures. Basically, what I did here with the work breakdown structure was just set up a way to capture tasks on my project and organize tasks, organize costs and hours as they come in. I didn't touch any of the scheduling functionality of the work breakdown structure. I didn't assign any resources to it but you don't need to if you don't want to in the system. So when implementing it, you really decide what you want to use the work breakdown structure for. If you want to get down into scheduling and resource management, all the functionality exists out here. But what I did here was basically set up a very simple cost breakdown structure. If I just want to manage this project by these tasks and capture transactions and figure out my costs for each one of these tasks, that's completely doable within the system just by setting up your task structure and requiring these activities on the project transactions.